Hi, welcome to a video tutorial on Dr. No's Tournament Manager version 3. In this video, I will cover how you install the application, how you execute the application, and also how the data that you create and modify during your use of the application is stored. All right, first of all, the install of the application. I've got this zip file up here on my desktop, and I've just downloaded this from my website. Um, and once I download that, the application is essentially uh, installed. In fact, I don't even need to download it to execute it. I could um, execute it straight from the website. But anyway, um, this application does not require a formal install like a lot of applications that use an installation manager. It's simply a jar file, a Java jar file that you execute on your system. So let's jump into the zip file. I could extract the contents, but I'm just going to open up the zip and dive down into it. And here we see the jar file that I need to execute. Now I execute that by double clicking on it. Um, most systems uh, that were created in the last five or six years have the appropriate version of the Java runtime environment installed and since they have that they know what to do when you double click on a jar file they execute the jar file. Um, if by chance your system doesn't know what to do with that uh, you can contact me and we'll figure out how to get your system intelligent enough to know what to do with a jar file and it's really a pretty easy thing to do. So just double click on the jar file and the application is going to start. Here's my beta warning that will not be there once we release the real version of the application. But the startup dialog will appear every single time you start the application. So let's take a look at what's on the startup dialog here. So this is going to take a little bit of time, just uh, we'll walk through it. Um, tells you the version and the build. So right now the version says development, normally that, that'll say something like 3.0, version 3.1, whatever. And that's how you'll know if you have the most recent version of the application or not. The build number tells you the build timestamp, so um, the date and the time. This is more for my purposes so that when you do have a problem and I ask you what build you're using, you can tell me the exact build number. Um, or the build timestamp of that, and that'll help me figure out exactly where I need to go to take a look at the source. Um, let's go down to the bottom here. Tip of the start. I'm going to try to put some more obscure uh, facts about the tool that might be helpful but aren't intuitively obvious down here, and a random tip will appear each time you start the application. If you want more detail on the tip, you can click on the goggles over here, and uh, you'll get that. News. Every single time you start the application, it goes out to drno.com and pulls down the news file that has all of the uh, latest updates that might be of interest to you. So in this case, it's telling me there's been a new beta posted. There's a component library on the website. If I want more information on anything in the news, I can click on the goggles. And in this case, we can see that beta 4.4 was posted, and here's the link to go get it. Um, you may get a warning from your firewall software if you have any that will tell you that the tournament manager is attempting to go to the internet or it'll say java.exe is trying to go to the internet that's why it's trying to go get this news file so if you aren't connected to the internet or you deny access to the internet uh, through your firewall software the worst that's going to happen is down here in the news it'll say unable to get news no big deal there's a license agreement now in version Two, I didn't have a license agreement. I expected that everyone knew they had to buy, get a license from me and they couldn't share it with all their friends. But uh, apparently that wasn't obvious to a lot of people. So now what we have is uh, you need to click this little checkbox before you start the application saying I understand and agree to the license agreement. If you want to read the license agreement, click on the goggles. You don't have to open it up every single time. You do just have to click on the checkbox for now. Okay, finally. The application stores its data in a repository, and we have to tell the startup dialog where that repository lives. Now, I'm not going to have to do this every single time because it will remember the location of the repository from start to start. Um, but since this is the first time I've started the application on this system, it doesn't know where the repository is. All right, so I have to tell it that. Now, really quick, a repository is really just a directory that contains all of the information that you've created to run your tournaments in your league. And it's all stored in one directory. So unlike version 2 that had files scattered all over hell, version 3 stores everything in a single directory. And that is a really a powerful thing because now what that means is you can take that repository and you can email it to me for debugging. You can email it to your buddy to take a look at it with his version of the application. You can throw it on a flash drive, get it on another computer. You can actually have the repository live permanently on a flash drive if you want to. You could put the repository up on the network if your computer can get to a network with a writable location. It's really flexible. 
So at this point, I either need to create a new repository or point to an existing repository. Now to create a new one, all you do is click on the little plus button here and say, my new repo. And it's going to make sure that the directory doesn't already exist, and it's going to create the directory with all the appropriate content. So if we take a look at the directory I just created, here it is, my repo up on the uh, desktops. Whoops, I called it my new repo. That's the one I created last time I was trying to do the demo. Anyway, it's the same thing, but just to show you. Here's my new repo. Um, and it's going to be a bunch of folders. And uh, if you've gotten into the application, these should all look familiar and you should know what they mean. And a couple files here. Uh, but basically, all the information, again, persists in this repository. Now, rather than open up with uh, no data, well, I'm going to show you something else. So I am going to go into um, a repository that I've already got some contents in and I'm gonna hit start now. Now notice that I'm using the server standalone uh, selection up here. Most of the people are gonna be using this. The bottom selection for the client I will cover in the networking uh, video but that's only if you're gonna have a remote console on another machine. Most people again are gonna use the top button here. So go ahead and hit start and it's going to show you the license information really quick and tell you exactly what license you have and how much longer it's good for. So review that every time so there's no surprises that uh, your license expires the day of a tournament. Um, and then it's going to start loading the compo components from the repository. And in this case, what we're seeing here is it's warning me that it's not getting some of the information it expects. Um, what's going on right now is that I have a newer version of the application um, than I last used with this repository. And I've added some more capabilities into the tool. In this case, um, console dashboard has an image in the background and you now have the ability to say uh, if the image should be scaled proportionally or it should fill the entire space that you've given it. And it's trying to find the attribute where that's, uh, that setting is and since this is an older repository that's not there and it's just telling me hey I didn't find the attribute I expected so I'm going to use the default value. So it'll tell you as it loads each component if there are any errors. If there aren't, then you just won't see this window. But uh, you can see also it's warning me that there are some components down here. Just follow the red if you want to. And it says there's an image, and this one's going to be the same problem that I didn't find the image mode. So your options at this point are either to go ahead and load the component, and it will modify the component, just fixing the things that were wrong and resave it so you don't see this window next time. You can ignore the component, which will leave it alone and not even load it, but you'll get this problem again next time you start the application. Or you could even delete the component if for some reason you didn't want that component anymore. Uh, most of the time, go ahead and hit load, but uh, it might be worthwhile just to take a look at this. This could be an indication too also that I've maybe missed something in the code, but usually it's going to be that I've added a new attribute. So go ahead and hit load on that one. It tells me it's going to modify it and resave it. And it's going to do this actually for each console dashboard that I've got here. And I think I've got uh, five, maybe six of those. All right. And then the application starts up. And if we go down to the console dashboards, these are the three that I've created. And uh, there's some other things in here, audios and whatever, but these all live in the repository. So that's um, how the data is stored and how you start the application.